Let's clear the fog right away. 3D printer is the umbrella. Filament printer is one type under it. A filament printer uses spooled thermoplastic filament and melts it through a nozzle to build parts layer by layer. This is the FDM FFF process most people picture when they think of desktop 3D printing. Other 3D printers don't use filament at all. Resin machines cure liquid photopolymer with light, SL, DLP, LCD, and powder bed machines fuse nylon powder with a laser, SLS. Here's what matters, laid out plainly, so the distinctions stick. Definition and scope. A 3D printer could mean any machine that turns a digital model into a physical object by adding material in layers, and that includes extrusion, FDM, FFF, photopolymerization, SLP, and powder fusion, SLS. A filament printer refers specifically to the extrusion family, FDM, FFF, where a heated nozzle deposits melted thermoplastic filament along programmed tool paths, stacking layers into a finished part. In common language, filament printer is a precise subset of 3D printer, not a rival category. How they work. A general 3D printer might project light into resin to cure it, or sweep a laser over powder to sinter it, or extrude molten plastic, different physics, same additive idea. A filament printer feeds a solid polymer filament, PLA, ABS, PETG, etc., into a hot end. The nozzle extrudes thin tracks, which cool and bond to prior layers as the build platform steps down or the head steps up until the model is complete. The motions follow XY paths for each layer, then shift in Z, repeating until the part is done. Materials and options. 3D printer covers very different material ecosystems. Thermoplastic filaments for FDM, liquid photopolymer resins for SLA DLP, and powdered polymers like nylon for SLS. Filament printers run common thermoplastics such as PLA, ABS, PETG, ASA, TPU, and engineering options like PC or nylon, typically in 175mm or 2.85mm spools. That breadth is one reason FDM FFF remains the most widely used 3D printing technology globally. Print quality and detail. Resin and powder systems can achieve finer details and smoother surfaces than filament extrusion because they don't rely on laying down visible beads of molten plastic. Filament printers have improved a lot, but the nature of extruded lines and thermal cycling means layer lines and small blemishes are common, and ultrafine features are harder to realize than with SLA or high-end SLS. Bottom line, if tiny text, micro features, or showroom smooth surfaces are the goal, resin typically wins on resolution. Strength, function, and durability. Strength isn't one size fits all. It depends on both material and process. SLS parts often excel for functional prototypes because sintered nylon yields durable, heat-resistant components with no support scars and excellent design freedom. SLA produces crisp detail, but standard resins can be brittle unless you choose specialty tough formulations. Filament printers shine for practical, durable parts from real thermoplastics, think brackets, jigs, snap fits, or enclosures, especially with PEG, ABS, ASA, or nylon, where layer adhesion and tuning are strong. If the priority is everyday functional strength with familiar plastics, FDM FFF is a safe bet. Supports and design freedom. Support behavior varies by technology and affects both design and finish. SLA commonly requires support trees that need removal and post-curing. SLS avoids supports because the surrounding powder holds geometry in place. FDM FFF usually needs supports for overhangs and bridges, leaving marks where supports touch the part. That's why SLS is so attractive for complex internal channels, nested parts, and interlocking features that would be tough to support conventionally. Cost and accessibility. Cost is where filament printers usually have the edge. Entry-level FDM machines are relatively affordable, materials are widely available, and workflows are straightforward, which explains their huge installed base. Resin printers have fallen in price, but resins, wash curing gear, consumables, and safety measures add ongoing cost and complexity. SLS systems remain the most expensive to buy and run, though they deliver capabilities the others can't match at the same scale. If the goal is to get capable, repeatable parts without spending a fortune, FDM is often the most accessible path. Build volume and throughput. 
Filament printers come in many sizes, and scaling up build volume with FDM is comparatively affordable. Large format machines exist specifically for big prototypes or fixtures. Desktop SLA machines often trade build size for precision, and while industrial resin systems can be larger, they're costlier. SLS build chambers vary and excel at packing many parts in one job, rather than printing a single oversized piece. When printing one large object, FDM tends to be the practical choice. When printing many small, detailed parts at once, SLS can be efficient due to nesting. Workflow, safety, and post-processing. Workflows feel different in practice. Resin printing involves handling uncured chemicals, washing parts and solvents, and UV post-curing. Gloves, ventilation, and careful disposal are part of the routine. SLS parts emerge from a powder cake and require depowdering, sieving, and sometimes bead blasting, with powder management and cleanup to match. Filament printing usually asks for simple prep and modest post-processing. Remove supports, sand, maybe anneal or vapor smooth depending on material, with minimal chemical handling. Let me explain the real takeaway. For a cleaner desktop routine, FDM is easier to live with day to day. Speed and efficiency. Nominal print speed depends on geometry, layer height, material, and machine class, so treat broad claims cautiously. SLA can lay down fine layers quickly across an entire layer area, depending on the light engine, but total time still hinges on Z height and post-processing. SLS excels when packing many parts into a single build because it prints the whole cross-section layer without worrying about supports, though cooling cycles extend turnaround. FDM speed varies widely, it's fast for coarse layers and simple shapes, slower for fine layers and intricate contours, and benefits from modern motion systems and tuned profiles. The point isn't which is universally faster, it's matching the process to throughput patterns. Many small parts, SLS, few highly detailed parts, SLA, or larger functional parts, FDM. Learning curve and reliability. If the plan is to learn by doing, Filament printing is kind to learners. The materials are forgiving, troubleshooting is well-documented, and iteration is cheap. Resin printing rewards attention to safety and post-processing discipline, plus dialing in exposure and supports. SLS demands more from both the machine and operator regarding powder handling and build setup. Reliability follows suit. Tuned FDM machines can grind out consistent parts with routine maintenance, Resin and SLS can be just as reliable in experienced hands, but ask more in setup, environment, and process control. Choosing between them. Here's what matters when picking a lane. If priorities are low cost, larger parts, practical plastics, and straightforward workflows, a filament printer is tough to beat. If the priority is fine detail and smooth surfaces for miniatures, dental models, or tight tolerance aesthetics, a resin 3D printer is likely the better fit. If the priority is complex, support-free geometry and tough nylon with batch efficiency, SLS is the workhorse, though the budget has to match. Bottom line, 3D printer is the category. Filament printer is the most approachable member of that family, ideal for functional parts, prototyping, and learning the craft without friction.